Hey guys, what's happening? Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching and coming back and all that stuff. And today in this video, I'm gonna talk about enhancing details using Luminar. Now, I did a video back when I was creating a tutorial series uh, for new users to Luminar, which I did, uh, gosh, almost a year ago now. So I'll put a link to that video in whichever corner it is. Um, and that kind of goes through the different filters that can help you enhance details in a photo. I'm not gonna get into all of those here. I just wanna touch on a couple that I use a lot and show how I use them to accentuate detail in photos. So if you take a look, here's uh, the first photo. I've got two for you. Uh, this one, and we went from there to there in just a couple of minutes. And then my second photo is this one, and I went from there to there again in just a couple of minutes. And so I'm gonna walk through uh, the filters I use and of course talk about how I wanna accentuate details and draw the user's or the viewer's eye into the photo using them and that sort of thing. So let's get started. Okay, so here's my base photo, right? So no adjustments, no adjustments, all my filters are turned off. So there's a number of different filters in Luminar that you can use to adjust uh, details or enhance the perceived detail in a photo. Things like clarity, which I use a lot, structure, which I use a lot. There's the detail enhancer, which I use mildly. There's microstructure, which I don't really ever use at all. Uh, and there's sharpening, which I also almost never use. Uh, and that's it off the top of my head. There's probably more, but you know, that's, that's five that sort of do not exactly the same things, but similar things. I encourage you to watch that video that I talked about a moment ago uh, because I walk through each of those filters and talk about them. Um, my primary ones are clarity and structure. And the reason why is just that I like the look that they give to a photo. I, I just think it works. So in this case, I took clarity and I took it to about 13. Um, and you can't really tell. Uh, it's, it's a subtle sort of change, but what clarity does is it helps give the photo a little bit of depth. And so that might be one where I, you know, I'll start out kind of mildly and then I may come back and add more to it as I uh, have further edited the photo. So I'm gonna go back to about where I was, I'll leave that there. Uh, the next one, uh, I did use Details Enhancer here, and there we go. It, it does, as the name implies, enhance the details, but here's the thing is like, I don't use this small details slider at all because if you start moving that, you can see the photo gets really crunchy looking. Um, and, and to me, overly detailed, especially a scene like this, where, uh, and this is just like a, a side street off of a, a place called Brick Lane in London, which is like a, on the far edge of town, past the Tower Bridge, kind of in the far east, let's see, that'd be East London. And um, there's a lot of graffiti and stuff. So I went over there for a day because it's fun and beautiful and interesting to me. Anyway, these kind of scenes to me just scream, you know, hey, bring up the detail, Jim. Um, and so I want to do that, but I want to be careful because the small details just, to me, they're just not attractive. So I almost never use that. I usually do kind of a gentle touch on medium and large if I'm going to use them at all. Uh, so there's the before and the after. You can see that it added a little bit of crispness there. And then I came into structure and that's my other favorite. So clarity and structure are probably my favorites. Clarity is also in the develop or raw develop filter. So I generally use it there but I just kind of skipped straight, I just skipped that filter in this video, so I just went straight into the clarity filter itself. As far as I know, it does the same thing, uh, whether you use it as a standalone or part of develop, maybe something to look at, but I assume it does the same thing. So um, next up is structure, and to me that gives a nice, um, you know, it's kind of gentle here. I mean, I'm at 20, so you can hardly see. Let me, let me drag it really high. It does give a lot of crunchiness, kind of like that small detail was, but it's not these small details. So the small details to me on the details enhancer filter are just too fine grained, almost kind of noisy. And to me, it makes the photo look really busy. And it's just not something I really want in, uh, like I, I almost never use it. Like I don't think I'd want it in any photo, but structure, I use it on um, you know scenes like this where you could apply it across the whole scene and I'm not. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I also use it like on cityscapes or landscapes where I just want to add a little bit of, it's almost like texture, a little bit of crunchiness to a scene and I'll just mask it in. So I think I was at 20 or something. I'll, I'll leave it at 25. Um, if you can tell, uh, these filters, I've masked them in. So what I did is I went over here to clarity and I brushed it in. Let me show you where I brushed it in. I just brushed it into kind of a box there, kind of in the center of the photo because truthfully, all I care about is this old storefront that's been just stickered and graffitied and it's got posters stuck on it and probably gum and you know god knows what uh, i would never touch it uh, but i love to take photos of this stuff um but what i did is i just masked in the clarity there because i just wanted to have it uh create that little bit of detail selectively and that's one of the things i want to talk about in this video is 
um, if you're applying details, apply them selectively because if you apply them everywhere, even in a scene like this, which you know you could get away with making everything kind of crisp and detailed and crunchy, but I think it loses some of its impact because it becomes visually overwhelming for a viewer. Um, so I just put it in the area that I really care about, right? And then I went and I copied the mask, and so the exact same mask is here on the next two filters as well. So there it is on Details Enhancer, and I did the same thing for Structure. Now, if you don't know how to copy a mask, you just go under the filter, and you click on Mask, and you say Copy, and then you come over to the next filter where you want to apply it, and you say Mask and Paste. Um, and that's how it works. So now I've got Clarity, Detail Enhancer, and Structure all in that masked area. But here's what I wanted to do is create a little bit of contrast between the crunchy area and then that area I didn't mask, right? That I left uncrunchy, for lack of a better word. Um, and while you can tell um, that it's not as detailed if you're paying attention, I wanted to create a little bit more of a difference between the two. So what I did is I took soft focus and instead of um, painting it in around those edges, what I did is I copied that same mask and then I just inverted it. So I came over here, I copied the same mask from above that I used on Clarity, Detail Enhancer, and Structure, and I came over here and I said Mask Paste, um, and then I said Mask um, uh, Invert, and it just inverts it. So here's Soft Focus, and all it does is just adds a little bit of softening. I, you know, I'm at 30, so not even very much. I just wanted to soften it up a tiny bit just to create a little bit more visual impact on the center of the frame, and also to keep the viewer, I think it helps that, and I'm gonna use a vignette at the end, but to sort of center the viewer, I think you're naturally drawn to the center, and I don't even know if you'd call that a subject, but that storefront to me is kind of the subject, and everything else is kind of just, you know, there. So that was why I used soft focus, to sort of set those off from each other. Um, and then I went Accent AI to brighten things a little bit, Color temp to readjust a little bit of the color and the temperature. Uh, tone to adjust some of the tones, right? So I'm kind of being stupidly obvious here about what I'm doing. But as I'm turning these on, you can see what I'm doing. Um, I did bump the exposure a little bit. It was a little bit dark. This was a single exposure, by the way. Um, sorry, a single exposure from a set of brackets. So this was the middle exposure, but no point in bracketing that. Um, it doesn't need it. and. All I'm gonna get out of it is with the tone mapping and Aurora is this more crunchiness and stuff if I want and I don't really want it, I don't even need it really. So um, anyway, I brightened it, added some contrast and some smart tone to, to uh, additionally brighten it. And then I stuck a little vignette on and with vignette I did what I always do which is add some inner light. So when I add that and then go back and look at it beforehand, I think, how did I ever not have a vignette? That'd be crazy. Um, and so that's another visual cue for the viewer. It's like I brighten the center uh, and I put the vignette around it. So all the details are in the center, uh, the brightness is in the center, and then the exterior outside the frame is darkened with the vignette and then also uh, softened with the uh, soft um, focus filter. So that's how I went from that to that. So it's a very big difference, um, but that's kind of how I think about enhancing details is being selective and then trying to create contrast. Maybe that's not the right word. Create a bigger difference between what is crunched up and detailed versus what is not. And a soft focus helps me do that. Um, on this photo, here's the before and here's the after. Let me jump into this one. One second. Okay, so here's the base photo. First thing I did here was actually a little bit different. In the previous photo, I jumped straight into enhancing the details, but here I wanted to get the light and the colors and the tones kind of right. So I did Accent AI to brighten it, bring some warmth to give it a little pop and a little warmth, and then Golden Hour to give it a little extra bump of golden. Uh, this was a sunrise in Prague, and I just wanted to create that, really recreate what it looked like, which is that. It did not look like that. That's too bluish and dark. It was a lot warmer. So. That was it, and then this time what I did is I added a new layer. So you just go to layer and you say add new adjustment layer. And after you click on that, you get this new adjustment layer. And I put my details here, and this is just a different way to do it. I added clarity and structure, so let me turn those off. Um, clarity, as I said before, gives your photo a little bit of depth, and 38 is not a lot. I could really go a lot higher if I wanted to, and I don't think it would be really too overdone. Uh, and then I added some structure to create a little bit of that crunch you know, that punch, you know, crunch, punch, you know, I don't know, pick your uh, your rhyming word there. Um, but even moving the structure up a little bit, I think, helps. And the reason I did these on a different layer is because here I wanted to mask, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, 
I got the layer turned off. I was wondering why it didn't look like it was much different. Okay, so we're getting a little too crunchy. Let me turn some of these down. See, I've done this many times in videos. I screw stuff up because I'm recording and I'm bopping along and talking and uh, it's really hard to do multiple things at one time. People talk about multitasking. I don't believe in that at all. I think it just means you're doing several things and you're doing them all bad. Um, I prefer to do one thing good, so I'm trying, so my apologies. Anyway, now the layer's on. You can see what I'm talking about. Um, let me turn these off. So there's the pre, um, you know, detail enhancement. So first, clarity. Uh, if I can turn that on, there you go. And I can probably give that a little bit more. Um, it adds a little bit of, um, it's edge contrast. It's not really sharpening or detail, but I kind of classify it in this category. But I think it helps. It does give a little bit of depth. And then structure for a little bit of that crunch. And I'm at 36. You could go higher if you wanted to. Um, and still look, you know, within the bounds of reason. Um, and here, the reason, as I said, I did these on a separate layer, so I could just come in and do a layer mask. So I just came up here to the layer, and I painted them in. Uh, actually, I didn't. What I did is I erased from the sky, uh, because it's a smaller amount of masking, right? And I missed a little bit there. I always miss a little bit, um, and I don't really care. Um, but I just came in and erased the mask from the sky, so it wouldn't apply there, because what I think is a bad thing to do is when you're adding clarity and structure and detail and whatever, stuff like that, you generally don't want it to apply to skies or water. And that's because skies and water are generally seen visually as being smooth. And I think people imagine them as being smooth. Unless you're going for a really over the top, crazy HDR, maybe it's a storm or some fantasy, whatever. Um, and to be clear, it's your art, so you do whatever you want. I'm just telling you what my opinion, and these are all my opinions, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I generally try to avoid putting detail and structure and clarity in skies or water because I think of those two things as being smooth, whereas land, buildings, uh, objects tend to be, you know, visibly you can imagine them having some crunch to them. So uh, that was all I did on this photo. So simple and straightforward couple of minor edits with filters, but you come a long way in a short amount of time. And it was really about the detail enhancement and a couple of different ways to do it and why I think why th what it is that I think about it and how I apply it. And I hope it helps my friends. So let me know, leave me a comment. Uh, what else can you do? You can like the video, you can share it with your friends. That'd be awesome. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back soon with more. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.